The Sahara is one of the most extreme and harshest environments on Earth. Its size makes it the largest hot desert in the world, spanning across 11 million kilometers squared. It covers a surface area larger than the Australian continent. It has a vast topographical diversity, from altitudes below sea level to mountains of 3,000 meters, resulting in a varied climate. On the edge of the Sahara, in southwestern Morocco, the Anti-Atlas Mountains receive less than 5.2 inches of rainfall a year, barely 10% of the global average, which makes this one of the driest places in Morocco and is prone to severe droughts. In this region, 60% of people do not have running water in their homes, and the water may not be safe for drinking. The lack of water and severe droughts have made farming unpredictable. As a result, men are forced to search for work in the cities, whilst women remain in the villages and walk three miles a day to wells to access safe drinking water. Unfortunately, these wells are now drying up because groundwater levels are plummeting. Currently, around 40% of the world's population faces water shortages. That includes some 2 billion without safe drinking water. Despite the fact the planet is covered by 70% water bodies and two-thirds of this is unavailable for us to access because it is tucked away in frozen glaciers. However, a new innovative technology is turning water scarcity around and it's bringing safe drinking water to the Sahara region in southwest Morocco. In this video, we will show you how water abundance is being created in the desert using the largest water capturing system of its kind to provide safe drinking water to hundreds of thousands of people in 16 remote villages and how they have managed to irrigate agricultural fields turning desertified land back into a farmland oasis. So stick with us as we dive into today's video. Southwestern Morocco is a hotspot for endemic biodiversity due to its unique climate. This region naturally borders the Atlantic Ocean, which brings a cold front of wind and fog. However, since this area is in the transitional zone of the Sahara Desert, it gets extremely dry and arid in the summer, and over the last decades has seen a reduction in rainfall. This zone has disputed borders which were established by the European colonizers in the 19th century. The people who live in this region were mostly nomadic tribes who used the vast expanse of the Western Sahara for agricultural and trade purposes. Often, there is a misconception that deserts are uninhabitable places. However, living beings have been surviving and thriving within these environments for millennia. The desert can also expand and contract for different reasons. Human management around its transitional zones are a contributing factor. The nomadic tribes were able to make the desert into a hospitable place by managing the land in a holistic way. Their nomadic territory was split apart. This in turn meant a rapid decrease in agricultural production. What followed was an extended dry period that exacerbated the process of desertification. The presence of soldiers, armed automatic weapons and automobiles also destroyed the local fauna over the course of the 20th century. And by the 1980s, the nomadic culture greatly declined due to forced settlement and urbanization. Big irrigation projects were installed, which led to salination of the soil, creating desertification in the long run. However, thanks to Asiya Dehem, fertility in the Western Sahara is being restored. Asiya Dehem is a mathematician and businessman whose parents were originally from Mount Butmesgida in the Anti-Atlas Mountains near the coastal town of Sidi Ifni, where slopes are covered in mist for an average of 130 days a year. Despite the lack of rain, Asiya Dehem knew that he could create water from fog. Whilst living in Canada in the 1980s, he learned about fog collection in Chile's Atacama Desert, one of the first projects in the world to collect water from nets. He knew then he could recreate something similar on Mount Budmatskida. However, it would have to be using slightly new technology that could withstand the strong winds of 100 kilometers per hour that come off the Atlantic Oceans. So he collaborated with the German Water Foundation, known as Wasserstiftung, and created a new innovative technology known as Aquilonis, which is a system of water collection fog nets 
with rubber expanders to reduce the impact of wind forces of up to 120 km per hour. And they have flexible trails which follow the movement of the net in the wind. They also have a spacier 3D knitted fabric, which has a larger surface area for producing higher water yields compared to flat woven mesh fabrics. Over the last 10 years, the project has been expanding and now 15 Aqualonis systems have been installed, which makes this project the world's largest collector park with 1,682 square meters of mesh space. And now 16 villages and a school in the valleys around the Aqualonis site have been provided with drinking water. Around 1,600 inhabitants will have a water supply of up to 18 litres per day, as opposed to 8 litres in the past. And as a result, the girls in the villages no longer have to fetch fresh water from the wells, and they can spend more time focusing on their studies. People can also grow modest amounts of fruit and vegetables, and due to the improvement of the water situation, new income opportunities have arisen. Some men are returning to their villages, there is a possibility this project may be expanded onto the coast, where there is three times as much fog compared to Mount Bot Mitzgida. So it's an option that's definitely worth exploring and for other countries who have similar climates across the world. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to tap the like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing with the notification bell on. Thanks for watching another video brought to you by Leaf of Life. We are a very small team dedicated to sharing educational and inspirational stories about sustainable and regenerative projects and solutions. If you wish to support our work so we can continue to make videos like this one, then make sure to check out our links in the description.